I just want to go over a few quick updates uh, inside the platform, and then we'll just open up to questions uh, right after. So the first really, if you work with like any e-commerce clients, this is really going to help them out. So we launched shopping ads inside of Google Performance Max right here. So a lot of people have been asking for shopping ads. Shopping ads work really great. You've probably seen shopping ads before. Like if you search on Google for like red shoes, you'll see those image ads pop up at the top above your search. Those are shopping ads. And you can add them now in your Performance Max campaigns. Performance Max works really, really well for e-commerce companies. Because you can show across all these networks right here, it's very automated. The only targeting there is, is location targeting. So to turn on Google Shopping Ads, it's literally just a click right here. And your Google Shopping Ads, your feed will be pulled in to Performance Max and will also be included on uh, Google Shopping Ads. The thing is that what you do need to do and what we're like probably would be like V2 is that you do need to have your Google Shopping feeds set up in your Merchant Center. That's probably the most important part for shopping ads. It's not like there's keywords or anything for shopping ads. It's really based on your product feed. So we can go over best practices for setting up your feed, but literally just within this click, this is going to promote all products within your, uh, within your feed in your merchant center. So this is now including Google shopping ads right here. Just turn that switch on and we'll bring in your merchant center tied to your Google ad account or your client's Google ad account. And now you can run really good e-commerce ads. These are some like the best ads for, for e-commerce right here. So, um, that's a new feature for you right there. If there's any questions on this, just let me know and we can uh, we can tackle them right now. If there's not, there's two other things I wanna show you real quick too. The first is let's, let's just stay on Google real quick. So this other feature that we launched is an integration with LSAs or local service ads. So local service ads, um, you might've seen these before if you look for like realtor near me or even like carpenter near me or electrician near me. They're like these little ads that really don't have too much text around them. It's tied to the business profile, uh, the Google business profile. And these work really well because it's pay per lead essentially uh, with local service ads. Unfortunately, Google doesn't offer an, a, a way for us to link to uh, local service ads directly because they're ran outside of Google ads. So how these work is that we'll kind of show you all these different options right here. If your business is in this list, just tap my business is in this list. We have this video here and we'll link you or your clients out to set these ads up. This video is just under six minutes long, but it goes over best practices for your local service ads and local service ads. Like it's not like you have keywords that you go after. It's not like there's different optimizations that are happening. Local service ads are essentially like set it and forget it, essentially. So, well, you know what? I'm sorry that you. Hey, <laughs> if there's any questions, feel free to jump in. But what this will allow you to do is you can follow this video or your clients to set up your local service ads, and this will link them out to set these up. Our integration, what we do is that once they're set up, you'll be able to bring these in to your play account. So they'll show in your advertise tab and you can actually manage these ads from within inside of play because it's almost like a set and forget it. Really the only thing that you need to worry about is the budget and making sure if it's enabled or paused. Um, these ones are really optimized and it's essentially pay per lead on local service ads. So this launched for you and your clients. And as always, you can always hide this uh, option if you want to, or choose to show it to your clients. But once this is set up, uh, you can manage your ads for local service ads right with inside of play. So this is live now in all of your accounts. And is, is that only for the businesses that are listed in that list? Yes, exactly. So this is like the list that'll show. And then also when you tap here, there'll be like a sign up screen to sign up for local service ads, but this will be for all these businesses right here. And I think once you even click on that link, there's even more, but these are for all the businesses that, uh, can run local service ads right here. So any any businesses outside of that right now at this moment is just not possible? You can try it. Like when you tap this, if I tap my businesses in this list, we'll link you out here. Let me tap this option right here and share this tab. This will take you to this get started screen. 
So if I tap get started, I already have my account, but this will take you to the eligibility screen right here. So this is where you can come in here and select the job category. This is where we pull the list from too. So you'll see like even some more options right there. Um, but yeah, some of these are not allowed um, even right here. Gotcha. Okay. But if you watch, uh, we actually provide you with this video because there are like certain best practices that you want to do. And once you set these up, it really is like set it and forget it. And what's cool is that your clients only pay per lead and you can actually listen to the phone calls from these leads with inside of Google, or if you use something like Twilio or like another like phone, you know, uh, phone and or call analytics platform or inside of uh, Google local service ads, you can actually listen to these calls and you can actually like dispute the leads and say, this one isn't relevant to us. And Google might even potentially refund you uh, because it is pay per lead. So these work really well. And this is exactly what they look like right here too. Is there a way to know what the pay, pay per lead would be for a particular area for a particular business? For example, I work with a lot of realtors. I am a realtor myself. So if I know that I'm going to be like in the San Diego or like, I don't know how broad of an area allows me to cover, but like Google keywords, just do I kind of get an idea of what I'm going to pay up front so I can give projections to somebody? Yeah, I'll you do. Look. So let me, let me mute this video and I'll show you. I'll skip to this part right here. I think it's right here. It's not necessarily accurate, though, where you're going, Logan. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not. To be honest with that, I do a lot in the real estate uh, space with local service ads. Um, you know, uh, the budgets on it necessarily do not match up. And it's they, per week, too. It's a weekly yeah. budget also. Mm -hmm. So, like, here, like, you'll see, like, 5 to 15 leads per week. But, I mean, that's a big, that's a massive, massive gap right there. Yeah. But you can dispute the leads too. Like once they come in and say like this lead, you know, it was only like 10 seconds long and dispute it and everything right within the platform. But um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Now look, the, the build out for these, is it gonna be done within play or is it just taking it into the, is it iframe basically into uh, the Google LSA build out? It's going to have to be within LSA, LSA. just okay. because there's so many permissions, you can manage them. Once you manage them, like once you actually like have the ads live, even if your clients already have ads live or local service ads, you'll be able to see them on this home screen right here. So mm -hmm. let's, let's take a look. So we won't be able to not within play, um, update the bidding and budgeting or the mapping as you well. Can up, you can update the budget and you can update oh, the yeah. status. From inside of play, okay. It, like let's say the local. Right? Sorry, go for that. No handling. Uh, can't do disputes through here, right? It'll have to still be in the LSA account, right? The account, right? Okay, right. But we'll kind of link you out to there too. Like I don't have a Google My Business account, but if this was a local service ad, you would. You might already see this in your client's account. Like this, you might already have the ad name right here. Let's say this was a local service ad. You just have view results. There'll be a pop-up that says import this into the advertise section, and you'll be able to see them right here on this screen. And you can just tap view results and manage your local service ads for the budget and for the status of the campaign right here too. Mm -hmm. If we could do more, we would. It's just super high permissions on the uh, on the LSAs. That's like the that is the we took it as far as we could and as far as the permissions would let us. Um, but you can at least manage your ads uh, for LSAs right within the platform right here. Is there is there typically a minimum weekly budget or best practice? Mm, let's see. Let's talk you about that. I don't believe there is a minimum. You, yeah, you're never going to hit budget. I'll be honest with you. You can set a really high budget on it and you will not hit it, especially with the competition in the areas. When you look at them, it's, you know, if you, if you have a high competition area, it's going to be a struggle to build up the, those profiles and get them up to the top, you know? Um, but yeah, you, you could set a budget, say $4,000 a month. Um, but you might maybe be lucky to hit a thousand. Right. 
And like, oh, what's going to help you beat competitors is like having your clients have like a high rating on their business profile and like a good number of reviews. That's what can help beat the competition too. Um, uh, with their, with that, but there's really not too much to manage in these, you know, like one thing I will say is that work with your clients on this section, because I think this one was for a real estate agent, like work with them and make sure you're only selecting services that they offer right here. Like you only want to select services they offer. If they're like getting into it, they're new, probably don't select certain services here. And because this one's real estate, like if this one was plumber, there would be different services listed here. So it's literally just checking boxes and saying, these are the services my plumber offers. If they get into like electrical work, they would need to like, you know, submit another form, but they could also show up for electrical. Um, but that'd be sort of a, a different thing, but they will have different things that you can select right here. And then for the areas that you're selecting also for the times, like make sure these times are the same that are on the website because they still can go to the website if they click on the app. But the most thing, like what's happening here is that it's calling, they're calling the business or messaging. And one other thing too, is that, where is it in here? Uh, there's one other thing for location targeting, um, uh, like certain yeah. area location. Go to profile and but uh, profile section. Yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. So you only want to select the areas that they actually serve. If you go too broad, just because it like might look good, that's just going to hurt performance too. Like you only want to do the areas that they actually serve. And you can also exclude service areas too. But like, it's not about going broad and saying, sometimes they go here, or, you know, they, they typically like don't service that area. Don't put that in there. You only, even though it might be broader and better, you only really want to choose the areas that they actually serve. But it's pretty much just a few things that you might already know about the business right here. Um, the only difficult part I think is, getting them actually certified. This is why they don't allow us. And it's like, this option isn't even in Google ads um, because they have to do like proof of insurance, for example, or uh, for realtors, you know, they have to add their agent license and things like this to actually get uh, their business verified. But it is pay per lead. Um, and this one is, this one's very good if you work with like, you know, some of these type of businesses. Um, so, if there, if the business is not listed, are they adding to this list or is the list pretty much the way it is? No, they're adding. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, should I, how I often should I go back and check if, if a business type isn't listed that I'm working with? What type of businesses do you work with? Primarily mortgage, home financing. No. Okay. They're not no. listed there. I already looked yeah. the other day. Yeah. That's a tough one. They, like I've been asking for that through like support, but the, the regulations on that is, is tough. It's really as yeah. tough as it was. It would be phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, there are things where you can, you know, talk to them, but this is the list. I'm sure they kind of, you know, when they first launched this, there was probably only like 15 options, but you know, if you work with, there's so many different ones that you can do here too. Um, it's but, fitness. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? It's like um, fitness on there. Or fitness, gym. like local gym. Yeah. Home studio is on there. It should be on here, yeah. Yeah. It's on I, here somewhere. I have a question. I, I think I have a LSA running right now, but I think it was before you guys linked it over. I know Kara helped me out with this. Are, Cause it's not showing up in there yet in play. Yep. Where, where it will show is on this home tab because we pull in uh, results. This is just one of our uh, test accounts. We pull in results from all of your ads. So you should see this in here, but yes, we actually just fully launched this. So maybe check again and you will see the ad, like the local service ad here and you can just have your results and this will import it into the advertised screen right here. Thank you. I missed that. All right. It's here. I'm going to go ahead yep. and input. thank you. Awesome. And I'll show you one more thing and then let's maybe send some more time on local service. Oh, go, yeah. Go for it. If you have another question. Um, we can always come back to local service ads because I think there's still like a lot of things that we can go over some other best practices too. Um, 
One other thing we launched, we kind of chatted about the um, video generator inside of Play. I just kind of want to go over that again because we brought this into TikTok as well. So this is our video generator right here. And even if you don't, like, even if your clients don't have a video, if they do, they can always upload a video. But this is sort of like Canva for video. It's a very simple video editor inside of Play. So you can always tap like from Shutterstock right here. I can search for something like dog. If you add the keyword vertical behind this, this will show vertical videos from Shutterstock or something like that. You can use this video right here. You can always, um, let's sort of generate our own audio or you can upload your own file, uh, audio file. But you can come in here and do like, um, this, this will generate the audio for the ad right here. So we'll just select this. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll tap here. Like, uh, you could add any text that you want dog training for puppies. You can add your background color, your text color. So it's going to look very similar to a TikTok video, um, by doing this inside of play and just tap generate. This will actually generate the video right here. Is there a limit as to how big a video or how, how long uh, the verbiage can be? For the verbiage, it's pretty much unlimited for the verbiage. And we will like actually, when the audio stops, we will cut the video when the audio stops. So like, let's say your, your video's a minute long, your verbiage is, you know, 20 seconds long. We will cut the video automatically at that 20 second mark. Best dog training company in San Clemente, California. Get your first training free. So we could even just use this video now uh, for a TikTok ad. This is already available um, for uh, Facebook, Instagram, all the other platforms too. But we just kind of did it for TikTok to make the vertical videos work too. Um, but that, those are the three features. So Google Shopping ads right here. Let's chat a little bit more about local service ads. And then we have our video generator. Um, before any questions, I do want to introduce Pal. Um, she just joined the team. She also worked at Google and Facebook. So she's on the call here too. And, you know, she's an expert marketer. She's going to be here also helping with any of your ad performance, any of your ad campaigns. So um, welcome, Pal. Congratulations on the new job, Paula. Welcome, Paula. Yes, welcome, welcome. welcome. Good to have you. So we have Pal from Facebook and Google, Huli, uh, expert Facebook marketer, also from Meta, and Caro, um, really leading support and everything too. She's she's from Google and the agency side too. So you know that's we have like just amazing team we're continuing to build up just to help uh, your ad performance and get it to the next level too. And some of your clients, you know, some parts, you know, maybe they're missing the strategy even though they can come in here and launch Facebook lead ads, get some leads, like when do they try retargeting or, you know, when do they, when should they try out TikTok? So um, yeah, uh, welcome pal. Um, with that though, hey, uh, I just want to open up to questions. Hey Logan, quick question. Um, so we're, for our business, we're still kind of handling all the marketing for the clients. So uh, we integrate into high level and then we're, we're running the ads for them. So, I think I spoke with Julia about this and I think she passed this over to the team and said this, this is something that might be, uh, might be coming up in the next month or so, but is it, is it going to be possible to remove that advertise and creative hub tab? So that way we just kind of require the clients to sign in, connect their platform, and then they can see the analytics and they can't see anything else. Yeah, for sure. We can do that easily. Um, awesome. that we're working on as well as, so like, that'll be in this part right here where you can also come in here and turn off any platform. We'll add that to the average. We're going to do that to every section. So advertise creative hub home, and then also turn off the option for, if we come in here to the profile section, turn off like this resources tab, maybe Beautiful. some of your clients are in a different depth. So you can have awesome. many parts. Um, awesome. 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 Okay. Thank you, sir. Yep. Yep. So can I make a request? Yeah, of course. So like like he was just saying, maybe you want to turn it off, but what if you give your ad, you're running some ads for your client, but you also want to give them the ability to run their own ads um, if they want to do a different platform, say. 
is there a way where we can lock an ad from the client that we built that we do not want them to adjust at all? Hmm. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. So basically, um, if we go into like one of these ads right here, mm -hmm. uh, we would turn off the edit feature, but even though like, do you still want them to see results? You just want them to turn off. Yeah, the they can see results, but I just, I don't want them to touch it. Yeah. You know, that's, like they can go really in and make option. sure we like hard code certain things within a thing where they can't adjust budget. They can't adjust targeting content, stuff like that. You yeah. know, they have to come to us to do it because they start messing around with that. That's going to eat up our time going back in and having to fix it, you know? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Uh, let me yeah, just note that down. I have a question on that. So, for example, uh, in that case, the idea would be if you create an ad for your clients, not to uh, edit the, the ad, but you will also grant them access to create their own ads. Is that right? So maybe we can think about these yeah. two options inside the same account. So if... It I don't know if you can make a page where, um, Logan, if you scroll up a little bit for me. Um, yep. So you show like this this part, the metrics, the asset performance and um, the, the top graph and yep. then don't have the bottom part where the adjustment, yep. yeah, here. Yep. Yep. Everything else would be fine, I think. And what about pause enable launch? Give them that option too or no? No, take, take that away. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just within the ads that, like, say we create, but they can create their own and adjust. Ooh, yes. okay. Yes, this will be like if you create the ad with the admin view and with the mm. admin email, you can yeah. they can they won't be able to edit, but if they create on their own, they can edit their ads. Yeah, that would be like the workaround. Yes. Yep. Yep. You're right, Julie. Really. Yep. Yep. I. Yep. Yep. I'm thinking it'd probably be somewhere on this section though to give you like that checkbox mm -hmm. um, to do that. But yeah, let me note that down too. So, um, so I have a similar type of question. So I'm coming from another platform that mostly was just Facebook, but I'm trying to do the Google search because that's what I'm good at within the realty space. And so what I want to do is create Google search ads where I'm targeting specific keywords and basically building out the keywords, the headlines and the description within Google search. And all they have to do is just add the targeted area and their budget and launch. And I see when I'm because I'm creating it inside of the Ply platform and then I'm connecting it to go high level and I'm trying to see what they're looking at from their perspective. And when I go into my go high level, it seems like the targeted keywords aren't there. Like the headlines are showing up, the descriptions are there, but yeah. the targeting keywords are all gone. So do they have to put in their own keywords? Like I can't have the keywords already pre-populated for them. You, you can, but it sounds like you're doing it in the creative hub, right? Like you're creating the templates in a creative hub. I must be. So yeah, I'm some, I'm missing yeah. some sort of link in what I'm doing yeah. wrong. So what I would do, like yeah. templates are really good if you're doing like custom fields, you can still create templates, share that over to them, but like on your templates, like switch into their account and just tap, uh, like from this, from this creative hub, like, let's say I have, you know, one of these ads right here, let's wait for this. Like, let's say I have this and I tap create ad right here. Let's just do it. Um, what you're going to do is because this advertise, like the creative hub is purely just creative, but if you just tap create ad and add the targeting right here and tap save draft, this would save the draft with the targeting in their, um, in their account. So, or you could just come in here into the advertise tab and create your ad. Like let's do it for Google search, add your targeting in here or use the template tap, create ad on the template add your targeting right here and just tap save draft. They would see these save drafts and their drafts right here. And it would include targeting, um, in their, in their template essentially right here. Okay. And that would be for everyone, right? That would be anybody that I shared that one with. Um, it would be, but to add the targeting with it, it would to how it would work is that you would, you would actually have to do it per account. Um, um, yeah, which could be kind of annoying. Okay, yeah, that's right. Because like I work with like loan officers, so like the keywords are all the same, but they're like licensed in only a particular state or something. So it'd be really nice if I could just like copy paste, copy paste the keywords because they work across any 
state. It's just, you know, right. Recreating right. it every time. What about right. a clone feature? Like clone to a different workspace. Yeah. 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 That, that wouldn't be hard, but yeah, I get it right now. Like you would have to do the tar include the targeting. Um, you would have to do at the draft from the draft. And then even though there's a duplicate feature right now, it would just be duplicating it in that workspace. Um, and, okay. and as long as I know that. that, yeah. I mean, at least I know that now because that's what I was trying to yeah. figure out. You can do that, but like that's like once you, you know, let's say you have 50 clients, like that would be not ideal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think because like how we do it is that this targeting, I mean, I can, I can go into it real quick, like why, um, like the creative hub, it's just, they don't even need to connect their ad accounts to the creative hub. So like you could even create a Google ad template, share it to them and they can have it in their account without a Google ad, uh, without a Google ad account linked. But like, if you share keywords and they don't have a Google ad account link, there's nothing for us to call or pull from that Google ad account. Um, but anyways, there's like a workaround that we can do. Um, currently how, how you would do that would be to like create your templates. Um, just tap create ad from the template. And then once you create this ad, you just save it as a draft with the targeting. But you know, if you have 50 clients, that's something that we would need to work on and we can, um, we can do that for sure. Um, but you can definitely, you can do it this way right now. Okay. Thank you. And then on the targeting for the keywords, is it one by one or can you drop them in like a CSV, like a large amount of them like you can on Google AdWords in the search section, I can drop like, you know, a bunch of keywords in like upload them or something, or do I have to type or add them at one by one? Yep. Like you can right now it's one by one, like we're adding the bulk upload for negative keywords. We're adding bulk upload for, uh, if I go into YouTube, <clears throat> if I go into YouTube right here and we do targeting on YouTube, where is it right here? <clears throat> this is also like another good bulk upload feature to, you know, cause placement targeting on videos and channels works really well if you have like, you know, a hundred, but we need to add a bulk upload feature here for the actual keywords. Um, we can easily, yeah, we'll do that. We can do that for sure. Cause we're already doing it to the negative keywords and to this section too. So we can apply it to keywords, which could also speed up the process until we have a bulk upload would be much faster for us to do than cloning it into a different workspace. So, um, yeah, let me follow up with you. And if you just want to drop your email in the chat, we can, um, follow up with you personally too. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And final last question. When I was doing the keywords, it looked like it was capping me at 20 keywords. Now that might be for a particular reason that you guys know better than me. Cause you guys know the marketing better. Is there a reason for capping keywords in one side of inside of one campaign? Yeah. It's just because it keeps everything very themed and it can help your ad quality score, your ad relevance, your ad ranking. If you have like a very tightly knit, uh, campaign. So for example, like if I'm working with a plumber and they focus mostly on like, even though they have like several different services, I would have separate campaigns per service versus like putting like drain pipe fixing or, uh, you know, toilets or something else. If you combine everything in one campaign or one ad group, it kind of just decreases the quality of that campaign. So we kind of cap it at, I think it's actually 15 just to keep everything very tightly knit which can help your ad performance because we want your keywords, which we would recommend based off the landing page, but to also your keywords will also be included here in the headlines and descriptions automatically. So it kind of just keeps everything very tightly knit. And if you want to run more, it's better just to do like a different campaign. And it creates like a very pure AB test because you can easily just come in here into the advertise section and say like, and just name it. Like, this is my drain campaign. This is my sink campaign this is my toilet campaign and just kind of easily uh a b test that's that's kind of why we do it perfect thank you yeah i have a question about retargeting ads um i don't even know how to do that in play yeah uh are you using facebook or yeah. okay so how you would do that there's a se there's several options that you can do and we're always adding more but you would just come over here into the targeting section and just tap retargeting right here. And in a tap, I've already done this 
But if I tap this, this would build an audience of anyone who engaged with this uh, Facebook page that I connected or Instagram account that I connected. This would create the audience of anyone who engaged with them uh, organically, like on a post, on an ad, and maybe they liked the ad or commented on the ad or commented on or an organic post. This would create that audience with no pixel needed. So some of your clients, you know, maybe they just started with you. They're like, I don't want, I don't have time to set up a pixel, even though they should, you can still take advantage of remarketing with this option. And you can also upload a CSV file right here. Um, maybe you have like an email list, uh, your customer has an email list they could send over. You can just upload a CSV file right here and remarket uh, to those people on that list. And then th those are the two options that you can actually build audiences inside of Play. And then you can also select any existing custom audience that they might already have too, right here. Awesome, thank you. What yeah. about retargeting for uh, previous website visitors if they had um, some tracking? Yeah, if, if the audience is already created, you can select that. Like we used to have that for Google. We used to have that for Facebook, but like we would build the audience and sometimes the pixel like wasn't set up and then like there'd be no impressions served. So it's like, we're going to relaunch that once we can just better uh, check that the pixel is firing and that audience has people in it. And then you can actually build that. That one's coming, uh, building uh, lists off websites um, and specific pages to Facebook and to Google inside of play. And then also another one that's coming is uh, video people who view like a certain percentage of your video of your video ad, um, which no pixels needed for that. But if it's already built, you can already, you can select it, but to build that, there's just some checks that we need to do because sometimes the pixels just weren't set up or not firing. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's created, yeah, you can select it right here. I have a Do you have a rough timeline on that, Logan? That was actually going to be my question. Yeah, we were going, that, that's been our priority list for like, I think we're supposed to do it sometime later last month, but then we've had things like we're really focused on like the creative part of your ads, but I would say it's not going to be this month. We're already on the 20th. Um, I would say for next month, it's going to be LinkedIn lead ads and we can focus on like audience build outs for retargeting in here too. So um, if you give us till next month, that would, that would be in here next month That's fine. Here. with LinkedIn lead ads. We offer lead ads for TikTok lead ads, Google lead ads, Facebook and Instagram lead ads, and then LinkedIn would be next month. Okay. And then is that something that we're going to need them to actually give us, you know, so if I have my clients just kind of connect their platforms through play, are they going to also need to give my agency access through their Facebook ad account, like an additional way for us to create a pixel on their behalf, or can we do it through play once they make that connection? You can you, do it through play, actually. Yeah, we we yeah. have a link. We have this yeah. feature now that uh, it's, it has to be in your default workspace, but we called it link bridge. So this allows you to connect to their uh, ad account directly, their Facebook pixel, their data set, without needing that hour long call of like having them try to figure out like, Hey, how do I get, you know, it's like, honestly, like an hour long call, like they don't know how to give you access. So all right. you have to do is give them this link and it'll, and it'll uh, basically just give them this link. And it's a step-by-step -step to like literally two steps and they would be able to give you access. Uh, this, it won't show play anywhere, but let me show you kind of what this link would look like. Um, again, this will not say play. Uh, we launched right. this last week. This will say your business manager account. This will say your business manager account. They just right. connect their Facebook page right here. Um, there'll be some steps as like if they want to connect their ad account to, if they want to connect their pixel, their data set, any, anything in their business manager, they just tap a few buttons and they will give you access automatically um, to, if you send them this link right here. Is that link bridge feature also for Google or only for Facebook? It's only for Facebook right now. And then it'll be coming to TikTok and Google too. And where do I find that again? This will be if you switch into your default workspace right here. Oh, It'll be like a link bridge option right here. How do we get in our default? Um, there's there's several ways. Like if you just go to whitelabel.play.io you will see this, uh, you can switch into, oh, well, first of all, it's on your clients tab right here. 
and you can just tap link bridge from here and you can just tap switch into any account right here um and go high level if are you using go high level or custom domain i'm in the white label but it's not here let me try logging out and logging back in And this is available in the 297 plan and the 497 plan. It's not available in the 97 plan Make for sure. this link bridge option. I have a question about um, the retargeting. Yeah. Um, the, um, so when you create the audience. Oh, one, one second, one second, let's see. If whoever said that, just, just follow up right after this question and then let's see if it's there for you. Yeah, um, it's is, we're is on it the 97 plan, but it's not here for Doho. In my workspace? Yeah. Oh, well, oh, go into our workspace. Yeah, it's like a you might have renamed it, but this is like a free workspace we give you. Let me um, see. For your own agency. Ah, uh, okay. You go into the home. Got it, got it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's okay. And then go for yeah for retargeting. Yes, um, sorry about that. Um, the when we create, I've created the audiences both for Facebook and Instagram. It says that it's going to take um, it's going to retarget everyone who was engaging in the last uh, year. Yeah. Now my question is, is it dynamic? That means uh, after I create the audience and someone engages afterwards, they will be added as well, or is it just from the moment I created three three hundred sixty five days before? Yes. Is it Really, the only custom audience that wouldn't be dynamic is your is your CSV upload. Uh, oh, let me switch into this other workspace. Um, long story short, yes, this one is dynamic. Okay, and that one. If I could follow up with a bit of a different question um, about the video editor, are there any plans on making it a bit more with more control, like adding more than what's available right now, or is that yeah. that's the final? Whatever audio is on there, we'll bring in your thoughts. Um, and what other things are you looking for? I'm not sure if it's my internet or not, good, but I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, something happened with mine. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So subtitles are coming. Uh, so like it'll just automatically add subtitles to your audio file on the video. Um, adding your logo is also something that we're working on, and then. Um, there's a few things like around cropping the video too, and there's a few other things, but what, what, are, what are you looking for? And we can look so into adding. I have a video that I edited like months ago and I was like, oh, that's a great opportunity to test this out, but it's edited with audio. And then I tried out the generating audio and it removed the entire audio and only used the AI. And I really wanted to be both. So yeah, I can download it and re-edit, but it'll be a lot easier if I can control both audios and right. things on Cause you, have, you probably have like the music on your other one or something like that right because you, you probably have music or something yes, on your original music. one yeah i want to keep the music and also i don't want it to end necessarily after the 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 words that after we're done with the generating mm. or i just make i can just make it longer to like add more words so it stays till the end but got being it. Able to like that i think i got it i got it so like multiple audio layers um <clears throat> Yeah. Yep. We can definitely do that. Multiple audio layers. Um, and what was the other one? Like, uh, choosing like where you want to trim the video kind of. So for example, I, the, I want the AI generated audio to be sh not the full video. So I want the video to continue going, but the words to stop earlier, for example, I don't know if mm. that's smart at the marketing level. I haven't thought of that, but I just noticed I put in the title, what I wanted to say, and then the video was shorter and I was like, wait, the, the cool part of the video is a bit later. I, I want, it's a very visual video. Um, yeah. So if I'll be able to keep it longer, for example, or I control it. Yeah, I know I can do it with editing software, but if it's all gonna be in one spot, that's gonna be us. Yeah, that one, um, adding end cards is another one too. That's something to like a call to action at the end, creating end cards. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. One way to do that is just like make the audio file longer. So it includes yeah. that right now but I get it. Maybe your audio, you don't want it to be that long, uh, like for the voiceover. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it would, um, right now it just automatically cuts like when that AI generated voice. Yeah, that's why I'm 
I've noticed, and also I heard you say it earlier. But yeah. Yeah, it's because sometimes the videos are more like for more visual uh, arts. It's like there's a lot of um, value in everything that's happening in the video. So I'm using I a agree. video that uh, I had a year ago go viral. So I know it's going to work better for ads as well. But it's, yeah. uh, I want to make sure the entire video is there. Um, yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's like one of our main focuses is like helping your creative out. Like we already have one for images. This video one is super important to us. Like bringing in that video editing, like just to still keep it super simple. But yeah. like that is still like the most important part of any ad is like, what do people actually see? So um, yeah, yeah we're, that, we're always going to be added to that. Now on the platform, but just yeah. uh, the important stuff. Um, so sure. with the image editor though, I play with it just a bit and it, maybe I didn't do it right, but it seems like it's very, um, it, it creates a few options and you just, you don't have much editing. It just creates options and you need to choose one. Right. Like if you tap load more, this might take like five minutes or something, but this will pull in, this will like create hundreds of different variations. And like actually every Tuesday we launch like new templates too. So like, there's going to be even more like every Tuesday, we probably need to like update you and show you the actual templates. But every Tuesday we add about five new templates um, in here. So this, this one is still very new too, but exactly. Like, it's not like you can move stuff around because we're generating hundreds of these. Yeah. Um, but that could be something too, or like a, sort of a template generator that, cause I have a very, like I have ads that work the, that are, they have a specific structure because all the details I need to be in the ad and yeah. being able to edit it within besides not necessarily having the AI create the options, but I, I want to change the text per ad. So just for the use case too, so it will make more sense. For me specifically, I do, uh, I tour around the country and I do workshops in different locations. So I want to be able to generate ads and just change the name of the location. Yeah. Uh, like Cal like LA, Vegas, uh, uh, Austin, Texas. And instead of creating it all in Canva and uploading it, having the template ready um, and just changing the, the location, the dates of the workshop, the um, the link, like the link is through the thing. So that's not an issue, but on the visual, I get it. Things, I get it. these lines and then sharing those templates with clients who also do it, for example, um, something, uh, along these lines. Um, I totally get it. Yeah. So give me like more editing function on like on those actual templates like an, uh, through a Canva integration, maybe, or something like that, that you... <laughs> we, they actually ended that. So, um, oh, that's we... right. Yeah, they ended that. So we can't wipe because we have it on our standard version. We can't, it'll say, long story short, uh, they kind of, we're still like partner with them on it, but we can't change anything. So it'll still say like play in certain areas. So we can't white label it. But oh, um, I see. We, it's just better for honestly for us, to, like just generate these and kind of like build our, because like Canva has so many ins and outs, it could still overwhelm people because there's still so many other things that they have to do, you know? Right. So we kind of just build our own and we would um, just keep it like super simple. Hey, I Logan, a you quick oh, question. Sorry. Oh no, you're fine. Um, just real quick question. I am coming over from another platform um, and we have a bunch of Facebook ads that we had templated out. Um, and I was wondering if there's a way that we're able to take those templates that we built out in that platform and bring them over um, without having to manually rebuild every single one of those. Yeah. We can help you with it. There's not like an actual import option, okay. um, but we can help you with it. Like we've already done it before. Cause I think I know there's like a lot of people coming over to this one, but yeah. anyway, <laughs> sure, we can, we've, we've already helped many customers out. So again, if you're open to it, like drop your email in the chat and we can uh, help you like import them. We've done it before. Sweet. Thank you. Hello, I have a question. I, I um, couldn't find it for the for the life of it again. In one office hour, you spoke about a good format for agencies to reach out to their potential customers on Facebook. I'm not sure what it um, was. It was some was a video, but I'm not sure what, what you talked about. I thought there was something very interesting about this, but I'm kind of do you recall that? Was it, was it for like how you can launch ads to get clients for your agency? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it might've just been, and it's like trying to talk about like best practices a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what works really good for that is a few things like when you're generating your ad, like, and you know, Facebook lead ads are really good for this because you don't need to change your whole website. And like why, why I say that is because like 
let's say you also have go high level, like you don't want to do CRM for like small businesses. That's just yeah. talking to everyone. And like, when you talk to everyone, you talk to no one. So instead of doing like CRM for small businesses, like come in here and do like CRM for tree cutters or CRM for um, realist, uh, you know, uh, plumbers or electricians. By doing this, you're creating an ad that speaks to them without changing your entire website because you're doing lead ads. If they click on this ad, it's going to that lead form. And that's like one thing. So you can, and you can easily like just launch 10 ads super quickly by just changing out CRM for tree cutters to CRM for yeah. plumbers and just launching that ad. Um, when you come in here, you can easily just name this like ad for plumbers, ad for tree cutters, and just kind of see like what niche, like what niche, niches work. But like we've done this before, like I've wasted so much money on just like saying marketing for small businesses, like that does not work. Uh, when you, when you reach out to everyone and like does not resonate with, with anyone. So it's like, if you call out their specific things like niche down, it's not like you have to change your whole business. Like you can have like 50 different verticals, but like mm -hmm. just in your ads without changing your website, because it's going to lead form, you can do that in here and just try to see like, okay, oh, sorry. What was that? Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that, but then also because you are a marketing agency, um, people are looking to you as like the expert, uh, even like for things like creative and things. So it's like, for us, like a lot of our ads are, I don't have my, I don't have my phone, but it's like literally just filming myself from my phone, uh, essentially just talking. Um, and it's like 15 seconds to 20 seconds. And we're just like, Hey, uh, this is what we do. These are our results and some sort of call to action, but like showing your face can help cut through the clutter. Like these, mm -hmm. These Shutterstock videos work great for your clients. Um, okay. They work great for your clients. But like for you as a marketing agency, I wouldn't use images of robots saying like, you know, we help automation AI with images of robots. Like that's just going to be wasted. So if you're able to do some sort of creative, just even from your phone and use this video editor with like a text overlay that you can easily add right here, that's what's going to cut through the mm -hmm. clutter. Um, and get your ad co your cost per lead uh, lower. Okay, awesome. And one more question to go on for the targeting. Does it make sense to include every business in a very small area, or must it, does it also make sense there to be local, but also very specific on the audience there? Because it, there's only probably ten um, spas or whatever, or ten realtors here in the city or in this town. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of depends on your budget. I'll let like, you know, Carl or, or Powell or Huli uh, chat to that too. But like, um, even for us, like a lot of our ads are like state by state. Um, <laughs> it just depends on your budget. To look. With $5 a day, um, I don't know if I would do a whole country. Um, or, but Carl, Huli, Powell, what, what do you, what do you all think about like, if he, even though he can service like a whole country, like country targeting on like, a ten dollar, twenty dollar a day budget. What do What do you think? The thing there is that maybe you won't have control on the results of of that kind of audience that you are going to target. So maybe depending on the on the business itself, maybe start uh, narrow or a very good practice uh, is to see the forecast result that you have on the right side, and there you can start seeing well mm -hmm. which is spend, which is the number of clicks that I will get the reach also and with that maybe you can make some decisions but maybe if you want to go into the full united states with just five dollars we won't get the best results yeah. because we're going to bid with other companies with competitors and well other big companies also and well it, it will depend on the results also so local and the approach that you, you just talked about logan that's crm or whatever i'm offering for tree cards for specific audience right yeah because you can even target like job titles in here now too uh, uh okay. so awesome know, cool too. awesome thank you so much yeah might help out your ad copy too it's like plumbers and uh attention plumbing business owners in um los angeles you know yes makes sense. your ad text too and it's all about like getting that cheaper cost per lead like you can do it country but like yeah. cheaper cost per lead that's no. Okay. Awesome.
Yeah, we, we have Thanks. time for one more question if there's anything else. Yeah, of course. Hi, Logan, I have a question. Hey, yeah. Um, kind of following up on the last question. So I'm about to launch uh, in a new vertical, which is alternative health practitioners. But within that, there's like sub um, verticals like acupuncturists or homeopaths, etc. So how, how would you say what would be the best way to to do the ads in that scenario? Mm, so like you're trying to get more acupuncture uh, clients, like people yeah. who decision makers at acupuncture companies. <laughs> Should I just target healers, alternative health practitioners, or should I target specifically acupuncturists, et cetera? I can what are some other ones in that in that niche? Is it like uh like massage therapist? Um they could be like naturopath, Reiki healers, right, um, yeah. et cetera. Um, I have some um, thoughts for like Carl or Carl or Julio yeah. Power. What what do you think? I was about to ask uh, in a more specific way, if you want to go ahead and use Facebook or Google. Probably Google. Um, yeah, because it's it's more like location specific. Okay, because if it's Google, Google's kind of restrictive when it comes to health categories. Mm. There, mm. You need to be like super mindful, like the only thing that will avoid your ad from getting flagged is probably avoiding false claims in the ad copy. So that is mm -hmm. not advertising like this session will change your life. You can change your mm -hmm. life. Like this will dynamically transform it. Like any of those claims will get the ad um, flagged. So if you avoid that, you should be fine, at least with Google. So that's probably yeah. the best recommendation. And then just like going okay. Keywords specifically, if it's a local thing, always adding the near me uh, little structure mm -hmm. after every every keyword that should also help. And focusing on negative keywords just for avoiding extra cost per clicks. That's right. for Facebook probably works in a different way. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you. Hey guys, quick quick question. I, um for for messenger ads that's just ads that show up when people are scrolling through their messages we, there's no current way inside of play to have a trigger keyword where then it they they message a keyword and then it automatically messages them something like if we're trying to do a promo code or something is there is there anything you recommend for that there's a few like we work closely with um like how play works it's almost like the tip of the spear to like generate the lead or generate the message you can set up like a few automated responses here, but like we're working like with Capri, which like works. Do you use Go High Level? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Capri is like one that we're like working on like a deeper integration with where they would have their follow-up bot kind of come in here and um, follow up to those messages. But like right now, we just offer these initial like sort of kickoff messages with auto responses. Um, but for like that initial, like full AI, uh, like follow up for like booking the actual meeting, uh, I would say Capri is a good one. And some other people, there's like really other good ones too. Um, that's just one that like, um, you know, we're working on a integration with right now. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, but with that, everyone, you know, we have these every week. Thank you so much for all of your feedback. Like that's how we kind of build this product and everything too. Um, and we'll see you next week. We have a lot of exciting things coming out and welcome Pau. Um, she started on Monday and like once she's fully onboarded, we'll share her email and you can all reach out to her uh, with some questions too, but she's still getting, um, you know, walking through play and everything too. So, um, but yeah, thank you all for uh, all your time and we'll chat next week. Good to see you growing, Logan. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thank you guys. Thanks guys. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, Julia. Bye.